Uh, one of the things that we wanted to cover off in this conversation, uh, more of a sensitive uh, area, obviously 2020 has seen a lot in the way of um, social justice, uh, complex social justice issues, um, whether it be you know LGBT, LGBTQ or whether it be racial issues, whether it be a, a range of issues that we've seen play out and they've been very sensitive um, even within the church, differing opinions and offences, we've seen them um, take place. Obviously, as ambassadors of Christ, we're often asked about these issues and our point of view as it relates to issues of racial justice or whether it be, you know, our view on same-sex marriage, etc. Maybe speak to some young people that wrestle with dealing with that uh, when they're asked about it in their schoolyards or when they're asked about it in the workplace as an ambassador of Christ, how do we how do we uh, represent our faith in a way that doesn't offend, but also we don't relinquish or, or, or walk away from our values and our belief systems? Might might start with Brother Shaw. You know, what would your advice be to that young person out there that wrestles with some of these issues? I think this is a great opportunity for the church to shine. I think I think issues of uh, of of uh, racial tension and. I only speak for Canada and my limited experience with the United States. This is an opportunity uh, for, for the church to, to speak through the lens of what it means to be the church, through the lens of the Holy Ghost, through the lens of uh, we're all one in Christ, because I believe <clears throat> people have been killing one another since, you know, you know Cain and Abel. That's, yeah. That has been one of one mm-hmm. of the issues that it's been a human problem and because humanity is drenched and drowning in sin. We are born in sin. We are shaping in iniquity. And so as a result, we have racial tension in, in our in our countries. We have racial tension in ac- across across the world. So the current issue, at least in North America, is about the treatment of black and brown uh, uh, people of various ethnicities. And 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 I this has been a tremendous opportunity for our church to speak up. Uh, shortly after the George Floyd uh, uh, hit hit basically hit the media, um, my dad and I, along with Pastor Kelvin Shaw, uh, who is in Ottawa, Ontario, uh, we we were able to do an online thing where we talked about it, but we talked about it from the perspective of uh, of of the Word of God. And, and I, I don't know where everyone is at who watches this, but here's one thing I do know from my own context in Canada, that Black people in Canada and the United States have often had very different experiences on so many things than I do. Um, Canada had segregated schools all the way up into the 80s in certain provinces. You couldn't, you couldn't buy property you couldn't buy property if you were a Jew, if you were a black person, if you were Native American, if you were indigenous, um, all the way up into uh, the mid 20th century. Uh, you couldn't, you, you, it was just, it was awful. And, uh, and, and in Canada, the racism was less overt than it was in, in the United States. Uh, but it, it was very passive aggressive, which I guess is the most Canadian thing ever, then it would be completely passive aggressive. Uh, but it was. And I feel that the church has the ability to say to say this, that God, when he created human beings, he didn't create, there's no such thing as different races. There's only one race, the human one. And we may have different languages, we may have different cultures, but by one spirit have we all been baptized into one body. And if there's Amen. any place that should represent loving someone despite whatever visual or cultural or ethnic differences there might be, it needs to be the church Amen. because we are literally one in Christ. In fact, that was the thing that made, without geeking out on Roman history, that was the thing that made the early church so so much of a threat to Rome. Mm. Was Rome was cool if if everyone practiced their own little faith and their own little cult, as long as it stayed to their own little tribe, the things, the thing that made the early church such a threat to the Roman empire was they said, Jesus was for everybody. And all of a sudden people that lived in different neighborhoods and have different cliques and different backgrounds and different festivals, all of a sudden we're hanging out together. We're meeting in fields. We're meeting in catacombs. We're meeting in large homes with their hands raised 
worshiping, singing hymns to God. Uh, you know, some of the early st- things that we read uh, about the oneness of God, our famous oneness scriptures in, in Philippians and other places, these were the songs of the church singing about how Jesus came to save everybody and how he was the one true living God. And the thing that made the church a threat to Rome was the fact that it was everybody. I think we're living in a day of tremendous tribalism, political, economic, social tribalism. That is not what the church is about. The church says there's been, there is one God who shed his blood on a cross for everybody. It's the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. And so I feel that on the issue of racism, we have the ability to say it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. There, there's no need to over politicize it. There's no need to um, there's no need to qualify it. We don't need to qualify it, especially to people that have been hurt. Um, we have had experiences of close friends of mine here in Canada have had have had horrible experiences uh, do, because of racism. They've had dogs sit on them. They've been they've been roughed up. They've been beat up. Um, and and so those at times, even by law enforcement, unfortunately. Uh, and so these are friends of mine that are ordained ministers in the United Pentecostal Church. They've been thrown against walls and pulled over and said, you don't belong in this neighborhood. This stuff is real and it is happening. And, and the, it is okay for the church to say, this is wrong. I think what we've got to do is we've got to present the church as a unique option to the racial injustice and the, and the racism and, and the, and the tribalism of our culture we've mm-hmm. got to present it we've got to be we have a, have a message that's different than the rest of the world mm-hmm. and 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 we've got to differentiate ourselves from all of the other voices that are speaking out about the same wrong but they have the wrong solution the solution right. is not political it is not social it is not moving you know it's not becoming anti-capitalist and becoming pro-marxist or any other ideology the only solution is christ and him crucified it's the holy ghost getting in and just wrecking all of the prejudice and racism that's in us and making us one. And the church has an opportunity to stand out and speak that truth. And, you know, the truth is, it is, a, it, it, it is an issue, but we cannot get caught up in philosophy. This is doctrine for us. When we say words like inclusive, we're talking about multi-ethnic, multi-racial, mm. multi-generational revival. Those are not plug words we use to try to do that we are a progressive church. Listen, we have been multi-ethnic since Acts 2. Amen. When every language is spilling out, are not all these which speak Galileans? How then hear we in our own life? They start hearing them. God's blueprint for the church was all nations under right. one roof. Yeah. The problem that we deal with is thinking that we are helping, we are we are enabling hashtags that we do not recognize the root of. Listen, just because it becomes a catchy slogan or you think it is tied to an anti-rism foundation, you also need to be aware of the root of the issue. Mm. Some things that are being sold as anti-racism they have a much wider sweeping agenda than anti-racism. I cannot state that clearly enough. You have to be aware before you just throw a hashtag on social media and because everyone else is, or it's the pop, we have never been about popularity. We have always been about penny. Pentecost is inclusive for the handmaiden. For Listen, it's for everyone. You find them on the journey, you bring them. So do they belong? Red, yellow, black, and white, precious in his sight. The, the thing that we've been caught up in, right, is, well, the world is jumping on this anti-racism. And, and so in order for me to, to, to show that I'm a Christian, I have to speak it in some sense of a dogmatic fashion. Listen, if it's taken this movement for your church to make up the decision about whether or not you're racist, there probably does need to be some introspection. We're not waiting on the agenda of the day to decide whether or not the indigenous people of Australia should have the same rights as others, or are we looking at, you know, whether they're black or brown or And I recognize there are certain areas that have a greater level of conflict, but I have seen too many, even youth pastors and pastors jump on and blindly hashtag support without knowing, because I might not choose to use that 
particular way that they're posting it on social media, or I don't use that hashtag, I might, some would want to label and say, well, then you're racist. No, the truth is I try to look at everything through a biblical lens and a worldview. And I would caution anyone that changes your message with the climate of the social condition. Mm. We are not less or more inclusive because the calendar flips or a new agenda comes in, whether it be due to COVID or due to Black Lives Matter movements and of the like. That is not what dictates our behavior. Everything we do is through a biblical construct. It is the lens through which we view the world and the way we view other people. Love the Lord and love your neighbor on you as yourself. Upon these two things hangs the rest of the law. Everything hangs on love God and love people. Yeah. How can you love a God that you haven't seen, but not love those you have? Yeah. And so it's introspection to take a look. The question is, how do we deal with this topic, though? They're challenging me when I'm at work. They're, they're wondering why I don't have that bumper sticker on my car or why I don't have that up on my window. And the truth is this. If you're going to put a bumper sticker on there, if you want to talk about love, talk about love from Scripture. Mm -hmm. Everything that is genuinely pure or inclusive comes from Scripture. But remember, we are not about we are not about agendas. Yes. We are about apostolic doctrine.